Hi, it's Nick from the Run Testers, and in this video, I'm going to be comparing the Nike Pegasus 39, the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, and the Saucony Ride 15. Now, these are all kind of decent value, really popular daily training shoes, kind of available for between 100 and 130 pounds. We've got full multi test reviews of all the shoes on the channel, so do dive into those if you want more detail on an individual shoe. But in this video, the idea is to give like an overall comparison of them and kind of look at which might be the best picks for different kinds of runners. So picking up a great daily trainer like one of these three goes a long way to making your everyday runs more enjoyable. But another way to do that is to stay hydrated on the run. To do that, you're going to be thinking about electrolytes as well as your water intake. So our partners at Precision Fueling and Hydration can help you do that with their online sweat tests. They've conducted thousands of in-person tests and have used all that data that they've amassed to create an online version that you can use to kind of personalize your hydration plan. And personalization is really important because everyone sweats out sodium at different rates. So getting advice that's tailored to you can help ensure that you perform at your best during your training and racing. So head to the Precision Fueling and Hydration website to take the online sweat test. And if you want to pick up any of their kind of fueling and hydration products, you can use the code RT15 to get a 15% discount on them. I'll put some more detail in the video description so you have those details to hand. Now, onto the shoes. <laughs> So we'll start looking at some of the kind of the key stats of the shoe. We'll start with the price, why not? Uh, and the Puma wins on that front. It's the cheapest of the three shoes. It's £100 in the UK or $120 in the US. Uh, the Nike is the next cheapest. It's £109.95 in the UK. It's actually the same price in the US as the Puma at $120. Whereas the Saucony is a little bit more expensive. It's £130 in the UK and $140. The Ride though is the lightest of the three. Uh, the Ride 15 weighs 258 grams or 9.1 ounces. The Puma is 271 grams or 9.55 ounces and then the Pegasus is 279 grams or 9.8 ounces. All those weights are, are in my UK 9 and all three shoes actually come in a bit lighter than their predecessors which is significant particularly for the Pegasus which was becoming a fairly heavy shoe for daily training I'd say. So we'll have a quick look at the design of each. Uh, the Pegasus has a pretty standard mesh upper. It's been stripped back a bit from the previous edition. Uh, you've got the flywire cables to create a kind of solid midfoot hold um, and then you've got a decent amount of padding around the kind of tongue and heel with the, for the reinforced section at the base of the heel to provide a bit more stability. Uh, the midsole is Nike's React foam but there are two air zoom pods in it. So one under the forefoot which has been the case for the past two editions of the shoe as well and now a new air zoom pod under the heel which is new for the 39 the idea is to create a kind of firmer more responsive ride and that probably helps reduce weight as well because you've got that kind of air zoom pod there instead of solid react foam and they've chopped off the heel of the shoe as well which again reduces a bit of weight outsole is really good on the pegasus 39 it's got a really generous covering of rubber which is kind of firm but grips really well in good range of conditions and on light trails and you've got a lot of rubber there nike could have taken and some of that off and reduce the weight further I'd say but actually I prefer to have the outsole for grip and durability that you have here. Puma also has a mesh upper uh, and it's got kind of a, quite a thin tongue but then loads of padding around the heel. The, the upper in general I'd say runs a little bit warmer than on the Nike and the Saucony shoes but yeah it's a nice comfortable upper, big squidgy laces and a good firm hold around the midfoot and heel with all that padding there. The midsole has got Puma's nitrogen infused nitro foam on the top there and there's more of it on the velocity nitro 2 than there was on the one especially around the heel puma also removed the kind of plastic heel clip you had on the velocity nitro one which creates generally a softer feel underfoot especially for heel strikers in this shoe it's also a layer of kind of eva foam underneath and then a re another really good outsole in a with puma grip material used which is durable and exceptionally grippy material you've got a very generous covering of it and the layout is quite similar to on the pegasus so like the pegasus the velocity nitro 2 works pretty well as a road to kind of light trail shoe but grips really fantastically well in the wet on the road. Now Saucony Ride has got a mesh upper and it's a really a very standard one. Uh, as I say, and it's got also a fair amount of padding around the heel and more on the tongue than the you got with the Puma. I'd say of the three it's got the lightest most breathable material used in the upper. Uh, then you've got a Power Run Plus sock liner kind of inside the shoe there and then a Power Run foam um, midsole. Now this is not the most exciting material in the world but it creates quite a reliable ride. It's slightly firmer than the other two shoes but with the Ride 15 Saucony has tweaked the formula of the power run foam to make it a little bit softer and also lighter than on previous versions of the shoe and then the, on the comfort side of things it is added to by the power run plus sock liner which is the the foam used on you know big cushy shoes like the Saucony triumph line uh, the outsole has been stripped back in terms of the rubber coverage compared to the Saucony ride 14 which reduces weight but you know might impact durability i'd say of the three outsoles it's kind of the least impressive in terms of the amount of grip you're going to get and in terms of the coverage of rubber but the kind of 
black stuff here, the black rubber used is very firm and it feels like it's gonna be really hard wearing. So I'm not too concerned about durability in general, but it's obviously not quite as impressive as the outsoles on the other shoes, which is really probably why the Socony is a fair bit lighter than them because they just use a bit less rubber on the outsole. <laughs> I was very happy in my normal size in all of these shoes. I'd say that the Nike and the Puma in particular fit perfectly well true to size. The Ride 15 is a slightly more roomy shoe in the toe box, especially compared to the Ride 14, but I didn't have any kind of trouble myself with the fit around the toes. And all three shoes actually provide a really good lockdown around the midfoot and heel. So I had no slippage and no concerns at that front at all. So yeah, really happy true to size in all three shoes. <laughs> So I enjoyed running in all three of these shoes. I did find them all to be pretty impressive, versatile daily training options. Uh, the Pegasus 39, I was worried would be less comfortable than past editions, but actually it's lighter. The midsole has been reconfigured, but it's still a very comfortable shoe to kind of use for easy runs. But the lighter design makes it a better, more versatile shoe I found. I was happy using it for long runs. I found it comfortable for those and also taking it down the track for a bit of speed work. It's not so great on the speedy side of things. It leans more towards the cushioned end and kind of general daily training purposes, but it is a reasonably versatile shoe that can handle a lot of running and it does that with a fairly traditional ride. It's got a bit of snap to it, but there's no like kind of exaggerated rocker or soft bouncy feeling underfoot. It's comfortable and protective, but it's not a soft or squishy ride or anything like that. And, you, and you're not really getting a kind of a springy feeling or that kind of smooth rocker motion that you get with lots of shoes these days. It's, uh, there's you know, a fair bit of technology chucked in here, but it's a pretty traditional feeling shoe underfoot um, and it would kind of get a job done in a range of ways, but it's not the liveliest ride. Now, if it comes to the liveliest ride, I'd say that's what the Puma offers of these three. It's got the most kind of modern feel in a way with that kind of nitrogen infused foam on top. It's very soft, it's very comfortable, it's bouncy. It really works very well for a variety of runs, I'd say. It's the least stable of the three. I think it's probably fair to say just because it is a bit softer and there's kind of less kind of support around the heel than on the other shoes, but I don't have any problems with stability myself. As a neutral runner, I don't think it's a concern that many people will have, but if you are thinking a lot about stability with these three shoes, it's probably the least stable. But you know, what you get for that is that softer, squishier feeling on the foot, especially uh, on easy runs. It's more comfortable, I'd say, than the other shoes, but also the most kind of bouncy and lively and gives a lot more kind of energy back, I think, when you're running at it at faster paces. I use this for kind of a tough fartlek session, a long one, and just impressed like how holding quite fast paces in the shoe feels like you get a lot of bounce back there's a lot of comfort there and as soon as like you slow down for recovery or, or for a long cool down back to your house it just it kind of almost transitions into a very comfortable cushion shoe that's always got that bounce and speed available in it if you want it so i think it's a really versatile ride it's a very comfortable ride and you again you've got a fantastic outsole that means it works well on light trails canal toe pass that kind of thing as well as on the road so i think the ride 15 is firmer than the uh, puma for sure and it's kind of a bit touch and go probably is slightly firmer than the Pegasus even as well. Like it is softer than the previous editions, but I still say the ride line in general does a good job of offering a firmer feel to your kind of daily training than some of the other options on the market with this shoe. Personally, I prefer a softer feel and I like the Ride 15 more than past editions, but other people might disagree on that front. But I think it's not, you know, too harsh or anything like that or uncomfortable. I found it very comfortable to use for pure easy runs. And I think this, you know, the slightly lighter, softer, makeup of the shoe compared to past editions, I think makes it a more enjoyable shoe to use for a range of training. The ride, I think, is again quite traditional in, this, in a bit, it's probably more similar to the Pegasus than the Puma, in terms of you've got a kind of snappy transition with that slightly firmer, more stable feel underfoot. It works, I found it worked very nicely for kind of easy runs, daily training runs. I took it out for a long run and it didn't really wow me or anything, but it certainly gets the job done. And as I kind of did a progression on that run and finished at you know, a reasonably fast pace, it felt comfortable and easy to pick up the pace in this shoe aided by the fact it is lighter than its predecessor. And I also say when I used it for kind of a hilly run, the lighter weight of the shoe compared to both the Ride 14 and the other two is a little bit noticeable when you're going up hills. It's just always nice to be able to pick your feet up a bit quicker with a lighter shoe. So it's outsole um, has done fine for me, gripping really well. I had a run in you know, really torrential rain with the shoe and I was mostly on the road, but a bit of canal toe path. And even when it was a little bit slick underfoot, it did grip pretty well. I've had no concerns about durability in my use. I've only done about 50K with the shoe though. And I do think, you know, it's got a lot more exposed foam on it than the other two here probably a little bit less outsole rubber to create grip and durability. So that might be a slight concern. You know, if you're just looking at outsoles of these three, then the Ride 15 probably comes in a little bit short of the other two. But yeah, in terms of performance, it does do a good job as a versatile day trainer. Again, flat out, 
top end speed efforts it's not its forte but it can kind of do those but really it's more just about cranking out the daily mileage in the shoe and especially if you're, if you're someone who prefers a kind of slightly more traditional firmer feel to your ride than the kind of softer feel of something like the Puma. <laughs> So I like all three of these shoes and I think they all serve a similar purpose in that, you know, they're solid do-it-all options if you're just looking for one shoe to kind of handle all your training, but they all work best, I think, in partnership with a faster shoe in particular. Like, I think they all do a solid job of your speed sessions, but, you know, it comes race day, I would definitely be looking for something faster and I'd probably use a faster shoe for my speed work as well. And then some people might find that they want a more cushioned option than these shoes and kind of to have them in the center of a three shoe rotation. I think all of these are very comfortable. I was very happy using them for easy runs myself, especially the Puma. But yeah, they all do kind of fit in that kind of middle of a rotation or do it all option um, as versatile shoes that offer pretty good value. The Puma is the best pick for me. Overall, I think it's the most versatile. I think it has the liveliest and the most enjoyable ride. Uh, I think it's also the most comfortable and I prefer it for speed work. So really it ticks every box for me in comparison to the others. I find it the best more or less for everything. And it's the cheapest here in the UK and that's another big plus point for it obviously so the only thing if you really hate very warm uppers or, or really want a kind of stable neutral shoe as your daily trainer then this might not tick the box for you but otherwise it's the one I'd probably recommend checking out first that I think it's the most enjoyable of the three to use. Now the Rye 15 I think is a little bit livelier and slightly more exciting maybe than the Pegasus but I found they very performed very similarly on the run for me and it's a lot more expensive actually than the Pegasus and the Puma. Uh, but I said almost the real kicker is actually the outsole. I think it's a good outsole, it's going to be a durable shoe, I think, but it's probably not going to be as durable as the others. And as someone who frequently runs on kind of light trails or canal towpaths or park trails, if, if that's you, I'd probably look at the others just because the outsoles do offer a bit more grip. You know, this is a lighter shoe and that's a great thing. And if you're purely a road runner and really value, you know, lightweight shoes, then the Rye 15, you know, has the edge on that front. But I think the difference in weight between the three of them is probably locked down to the fact the different outsole coverages you're getting here and I'd rather spend the kind of extra you know 15 20 30 grams and have an outsole that's going to be more durable and grip a bit better in a daily trailer like this that you want to use for lots of different runs on different terrains and you know have it last a long time. I so said that's probably how I ended up ranking the three I think the Puma is the top pick for me I think the Nike has the edge on the Saucony just because it's cheaper and the outsole is a bit better but the Rye 15 you know is an option if you're not concerned about cost at all if you want purely the lightest of the three and a slightly firmer feel to the ride, then it does offer that. So you buy any of these three shoes, you're gonna be a reasonably happy runner. I think they all do their job very well. Puma is definitely my top pick of the three, but if you do like the sound of what I've kind of said about the other shoes in this video, then you're not gonna be unhappy picking those up either, I don't think. And I'll also say, all of these shoes as popular daily trainers will be in sale sometime. So if price is a concern, you know, keep, keep your eyes peeled and you'll probably get a good deal on them at some point. <laughs> That's it guys, that's our run through of these three popular daily training shoes. Let us know what you think in the comments below and, and do go and check out the Precision Fueling and Hydration Sweat Test. Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell and we'll see you next time.